Hey guys, this is Dr. Kamal again. We're going to continue on with our ultrasound series. And today we're going to talk to you about the Achilles tendon. Now in our clinics, uh, there are a wide range of Achilles tendon pathologies, uh, such as with our weekend warriors, males over the age of 30 with um, Achilles ten tendinopathy due to uh, improper stretching or poor conditioning. Uh, you also can see overuse injuries uh, and inflammation in the insertion. Now ultrasound could be helpful for a clinician to identify exactly what pathology we're working with. For example, uh, a patient may have retrocalcaneal bursitis which mimics uh, the acute or chronic Achilles tendonitis. So we want to use ultrasound to our advantage to help uh, decipher exactly what pathology we're working with. All right, so as you can see here, we have the patient in the prone position, which I believe is the easiest. You can do it in the, in the uh, supine position. However, it may be difficult to uh, position the patient's foot and, and to get, uh, gain good access to the Achilles tendon. So here you can see the patient's in the prone. We can easily dorsiflex the patient's foot, um, which is important because this type of imaging uh, has a dynamic component which is which is useful so we want to be able to utilize that now we want to do the long axis which is parallel to the long axis of the leg the probe will be and then the transverse or the axial will be perpendicular to the long axis now you want a system when you're doing this type of imaging you could either start from the mild tendon junction and work down to the insertion or vice versa and you want to do that in both the long, longitudinal and in the axial views. So we'll start with the uh, longitudinal. I'm going to start from the insertion and, and move up to the myotendinous junction. So here you go. You're going to see that the tendon normally appears uh, echogenic and fibrillar, a thin echogenic layer of surrounding connective tissue will, you, you will be able to see, and this is the peritinon, which envelopes the tendon. You want to be careful of the principle of uh, anisotropy. Uh, it must be taken into consideration when imaging the Achilles tendon, uh, because anisotropy will, will give you a false impression of, uh, of tendinopathy because of the hypoechoic image that it that, re that, res that results. So for instance, if I don't have a full, if I don't have my transducer, if we move to the axial, now you can see the tendon in the axial, starting from the insertion and working up. Now, if I take my probe off, let's say on the medial side, you can see that uh, hypoechoic image there, that may that may give you a false uh, mimicking of tendinopathy. However, if I just place the probe on all the way, then you can see the full thickness of the tendon. And in this patient, it appears to be normal. Here you're going to see an image of a normal Achilles tendon in the long axis. Uh, when I view a long axis of the Achilles tendon, I like to imagine that I'm looking at the patient sort of from the sagittal plane, so medial to lateral. In this view, you can see the thickness of the Achilles tendon from anterior to posterior. Now, um, normally you can see um, an echogenic appearance of the tendon that is sort of fibular. Uh, you could also see an echogenic thin layer that surrounds the tendon, that as you guys know is the peritinon. Here is another long axis view. Now normally there's no fluid or soft tissue which should be seen within the deep retrocalcaneal bursa. However, in this, in this image it demonstrates that there's a small amount of hypoechoic soft tissue uh, seen here that's outlined in the blue that replaces the normal fat that exists there. Uh, now this particular patient exhibited exquisite tenderness and what's beautiful about this ultrasound is now that you have, you've identified this bursitis, you can inject right into it with whatever it is that you like to inject with. We're going to take a look at tendinopathy in both the long axis and in the short axis. So when looking at tendinopathy or Achilles tendonitis, 
Uh, it is usually visualized as a fusiform thickening of the Achilles tendon, often with decreased echogenicity. Now, anthesiopathic changes at the calcaneus can be seen with ultrasound, and this is seen as a linear or a, a curvilinear echogenicity, often a focal shadowing, shadowing within the distal Achilles tendon at the enthesis. Now we can see here a complete Achilles tendon rupture, which is seen in the long axis view. As indicated by the white, you can see the normal Achilles tendon with its echogenicity and the fibular architecture. Separating the two ends is hypogenicity, which is what could be the space between the tendons, but may as well also be the hemorrhage from the trauma that took place in order to have this rupture. Now, oftentimes, calcaneal apophysitis can be a very easy clinical diagnosis to make in our young patient population. However, ultrasound provides a quick and easy way to diagnose apophysitis without exposing our young patients to radiation from x-rays. As you can see, in this image, on the left side is the patient's left calcaneus, which is the side with calcaneal apophysitis. Although subtle, you can see that there is a slight increase in the hypoechoic inflammation or the dark line that's noted in a curvilinear fashion around the calcaneus. This is indicative of, of calcaneal apophysitis. As you can see here, the left image is the patient's left calcaneus, and you can see the amount of echogenicity that exists in the short axis of the calcaneus with more echogenicity and a thicker inflammation versus the right you can see there's less echogenicity around the curvilinear aspect of the calcaneus which shows that the the apophysitis is on the left and not on the right thank you guys so much for watching i'm excited for the next video on this ultrasound series so stay tuned you guys thanks